Bidurion was the first once-weekly diabetes medication ever made available. As a GLP-1 agonist, Bidurion falls into a class of type 2 diabetes medications that's one of the most effective and most highly recommended by professional diabetes associations. Welcome to Sugar High Guys, I'm PA David. I'm a board certified and licensed diabetes PA practicing in Southern California and Sugar High is your channel to come to for relatable and reliable diabetes information that is always easy to understand. On today's Sugar High video, we're gonna go into everything surrounding the type two diabetes medication by Durian. We'll cover how this medication works, the side effects, how to inject this thing, and I'll even share some of my own opinions with you about Bidurion itself and its place in treating type 2 diabetes. So let's get going on this episode of Sugar High. All right, usual disclaimers, as always, this video is intended as general information and not specific medical advice for you personally. Please don't start or stop any medication without first consulting your own healthcare provider. This video is not sponsored by the manufacturer of Bidurion. I don't get any kind of compensation for talking about it here and I have no connection with that company whatsoever. So rest assured that everything I say is my own honest opinion or actual data from clinical trials. So let's start with what Bidurion is. Bidurion is a non-insulin injected medication that belongs to a family of meds called GLP-1 receptor agonists, or as we more commonly refer to them, just GLP-1s. If you want a full explanation on what the GLP-1 hormone is and what these medications do, including action and common side effects, you might want to check out this video right here where I discuss this category of medication in full detail. But don't go anywhere just yet because I'll also link it at the end of this video so it's right there for you when you finish this. But here is just a quick summary as a refresher. When you eat, your intestines naturally release a hormone called GLP-1, which triggers the pancreas to make insulin to manage the incoming glucose. It tells the brain to feel less hungry so that we know when it's time to stop eating, and it slows down how quickly the stomach digests food and sends it into the intestines for absorption. In type 2 diabetes, the effect of GLP-1 and other hormones in that incretin system becomes weaker and they just don't work as well. So the idea is that if we add more GLP-1 to the system, we can restore some of that effect. The very first medication to ever do this was called Bieta, and it worked well enough, but it only lasted a few hours in the body, so it needed to be injected twice per day. Bidurion is the exact same medication as Bieta, but they developed a way to protect it from being broken down as quickly by sort of encapsulating it in these biodegradable microspheres. As those little microspheres slowly dissolve after injection, the medication slowly gets released, allowing you to inject it only once per week. When Bidurion was first released, it was kind of a pain in the butt to use because it was a powder in a vial that you had to inject a liquid and then mix it with the liquid and then draw it back up into a syringe for injection. And after a few years, they developed a pen device that sort of had a, the powder and the liquid in a separate chamber, and then you'd mix them together and then shake it up real good before injection. But even the Bidurion pen was a bit ridiculous. I mean, look at this thing. The current version of Bidurion is called B-Size, and it's much more reasonable in how it's used, but there are still a few steps involved, so I'll walk you through how to use this. Now, I'll be honest, I thought about including a tutorial on how to use both devices, the pen and the B-Size, but I don't think I'm gonna bother with the older version because very few people are still using this. Almost everyone is switching over to the newer version because it's not any more expensive and it's just better. So if you're still using the older pen, maybe think about asking your healthcare provider about switching over to the new version. I don't know for sure, but I kinda suspect that it's not gonna be long before they stop making this one altogether anyway. Bidurion only comes in one dose, two milligrams once a week. This kind of makes it unique amongst other medications in this class. Every other GLP-1 medication has low doses and higher doses. We start out at the low dose and then we gradually increase to the higher dose so that your body can get used to the medication and minimize your side effects. With Bidurion, you start at two milligrams a week and that's it. There's no increase and there's no different doses for you to keep track of. 
So with no lower dose to start out on and kind of get used to it, it might make you wonder if starting out at that full dose is gonna make the side effects unbearable and miserable, right? Well, we're gonna talk about the side effects after the tutorial, and I think you're gonna be kind of surprised at how low the side effect profile is compared to other medications in this class. But the reason that there's no lower introductory dose with Bidurion has everything to do with the way that this medication absorbs. Even though you start out injecting that full dose all at once, Bidurion releases so slowly that it actually takes 10 full weeks for the steady level of medication to build up in your system. That means since it takes two and a half months for the Bidurion to reach steady state level, it's gonna take a while for it to become fully effective against your blood glucose too. So if you've been on Bidurion two or three weeks and you notice that your sugar level isn't really coming down much yet, hang in there. It's gonna seem like this stuff isn't working, but that's normal. It's supposed to take a couple of months for the medication to kick in. Bidurion kind of banks on the idea that diabetes management is a marathon, not a sprint. So just something to keep in mind. All right, if you look at this injector pen, you're gonna see a little window into the chamber where the medication is stored. And one thing I wanna show you guys is that even in the newer B-size pen, Bidurion is still a powder that gets mixed into this clear liquid. Take a look and you're gonna see that there's some white, if we look down here, you'll see that there's still some white stuff settled at the bottom. That powder is the actual medication, so this is gonna to need to be mixed up and shaken before you inject it. These pens can be stored at room temperature for about a month. So assuming you only get one month supply at a time from your pharmacy and your house doesn't get any hotter than like a comfortable room temperature, you don't have to store these things in the fridge, but most people still do just in case. But if you do store it in the fridge, take this out a good 20 to 30 minutes before you plan to inject it because this is gonna be a lot harder to mix up properly if the liquid is still cold. Check this out. Here's one B-size pen that's been at room temperature for a while, and here's one that I just took out of the fridge. As we shake these both up for a few seconds, you can see how the one that's already warmed up is already nicely mixed and the liquid is evenly cloudy. But the cold one kind of started to mix a little bit, but there's still a lot of white medication that's stuck to the sides and not yet mixed up. If you inject it like this, you're not gonna get all of your medication. So this cold one still needs to be shaken a lot more before it's ready to use. All right, we're gonna shake this thing up like salad dressing to get it completely mixed up. We're gonna shake it for about 15 seconds so that it's nice and milky with no unmixed chunks. And then once it's all milky like that, then we can go ahead and get this thing ready for injection. We need to turn this switch here at the bottom from the locked button over to the unlocked picture. But when you do this, make sure that you're holding the pen upright with this orange cap toward the top. I actually made this mistake a couple times before I realized what I was doing wrong. You see how there's an air bubble that's in there? That air bubble is there to help everything mix well when you shake it up. But when we unlock this switch, the plunger is gonna move the liquid up a little bit to start moving that air bubble up and out. If you're holding this thing sideways, when you turn the switch, the plunger is gonna push the medication out a little bit and the air bubble is gonna stay behind. So as I turn it upright like this, watch what happens when I turn it from locked to unlocked. You see how it moves up a little bit like that. You can see how there's still a little bit of air bubble in there, so we're gonna keep it upright as we remove this orange cap because as I twist it counterclockwise, just like any other cap, when I remove this thing, it's gonna pop that button up and then the bubble gets pushed out the rest of the way. This is now ready to go and is prepared for injection. There are three approved areas that you can inject by Durian, and those are your abdomen, your thigh, or the back of your arm. Realistically though, you can inject this anywhere where there's enough fat. Those are just the areas that the FDA gives their blessing based on where the study participants injected it during clinical trials. Wherever you inject it though, do make sure that your skin is clean. You can wipe it with an alcohol swab if you want, but soap and water is just fine as well. Now that we're ready to inject it, let's get our favorite sugar high injection volunteer, Kevin, on board, and we're gonna inject this sucker into him. All right, so now that my boy Kevin is already ready to go because he's cleaned his skin, we've already prepared the pen by turning it from locked to unlocked, and we removed that orange cap. That's pretty much it. All there really is at this point is really just to place it against the skin like this and watch the plunger. As I press down on the button, it clicks, 
and you can see that the plunger moves the medicine down into Kevin there. And you can see the orange color on that plunger lets you know what you're looking at. There's not gonna be a snap back into the pen the way you might have noticed if you've seen my Trulicity video. It pushes the medication in and then it just pauses there at the end. So realistically, all you need to do is press down and count to 15. Give it a solid 15 seconds to soak in. Once 15 seconds has gone by, just pull it away and then the medication will be in, but the needle will retract back into the pen and that way nobody gets accidentally poked, there's nothing to remove, and then this thing can be disposed of in the sharps container. That's it, that's all there is to it. It's very, very simple to use. You use one of these per injection. It's not like it holds multiple doses. It's a one and done sort of thing. And thank you very much, Kevin. Once again, you really come through for the team. In terms of glucose management, Bidurion is a really effective medication. And on average, it reduces A1C by about 1.3%. Let's compare that to something like Genuvia, which is the most commonly prescribed non-generic diabetes medication in the world. Genuvia drops A1C by about 0.8%, which means that Bidurion is almost 40% more effective. It's not bad for a medication that has to be used only once a week. One very convenient side effect of medications in this category is that they tend to help people lose weight. Bidurion does bring about some weight loss, but it's really not that robust. In clinical trials, people lost an average of about three pounds compared to those taking placebo. Three pounds is better than nothing, but other medications in this family tend to bring about quite a bit more weight loss than Bidurion does. Now, the main reason that we use medications in the GLP-1 class is for the purpose of lowering blood sugar. But another really great benefit that most medications in this family have is that they tend to reduce cardiovascular risk. Medications like Victoza, Ozempic, and even the discontinued medication Tanzium have all shown significant reductions in cardiovascular events like heart attacks, stroke, and generalized cardiovascular death. So much so that the FDA has even approved them to be used specifically for that purpose. Unfortunately, Bidurion doesn't have that. The clinical trial that tested Bidurion's effect on cardiovascular safety didn't quite demonstrate significant reduction in risk. So unlike many of the others, Bidurion doesn't have that official FDA recommendation for heart risk reduction. Just between you and me though, I kind of think that it probably does actually help. There were some real problems with how that study was designed and carried out, and it just barely missed that statistical point of significance. Don't take this as anything other than my own opinion and suspicions, but I think if that study could be redesigned and repeated, they might have just actually seen that significant benefit. Just a thought. All right, let's talk about downsides and side effects, shall we? Bidurion comes with all the standard side effects that are common in other medications in the GLP-1 class like Victoza, Trulicity, Ozempic, and Ribelsis. The most common side effect of these medications is nausea and upset stomach, sometimes with vomiting. If you want a full explanation of typical standard side effects with this class of medication, remember that I'm gonna link that video on GLP-1 medications in general at the end of this one, and that'll give you a full overview of all the common side effects and why they happen. Now, even though the side effect profiles of these medications are all pretty similar, Bidurion actually causes these side effects much less commonly than the others. We have to be a bit careful about comparing different clinical trials to each other, but just for fun, let's compare some of these side effects amongst the different medications. Let's start with nausea, which is the most common side effect. Check this out. Most of the leading medications in this class cause nausea in about 20% of people, but Bidurion causes nausea in less than half that many, only 8.2%. Diarrhea happens anywhere between 9 and 12% of the time with most of these meds, but only 4% of the time with Bidurion. How about vomiting? Most of these medications cause vomiting in 8 or 9% of people, but in Bidurion, only 3.4%. There is one rather significant side effect common in people using Bidurion that none of the other ones have. About 10% of people using Bidurion develop a small nodule underneath the skin in the location where the medication was injected. It seems to be caused by that microsphere feature that allows the medication to be dissipated over the seven days, and the nodules aren't dangerous. 
They don't normally hurt, but some people have told me that they can be a little bit tender. If you develop one of these nodules, it does not mean that you're allergic to Bidurion. This is a normal known side effect and they normally go away within a week or two. Now, like I said, these are not dangerous, but they do tend to freak people out a bit. So I normally like to warn my patients about the possibility of this happening so that they're not caught off guard. What to do about it if it happens to you is kind of up to you and your healthcare provider. If they don't bother you, then just keep taking the medication. But if they're tender or if you're just not comfortable with it, there are plenty of other medications in the same family without this side effect that we could easily switch to. There is a boxed warning stating that you should not take Bidurion if you have a history of medullary thyroid cancer, which is one of the most rare types of thyroid cancer in humans. This warning is based entirely on the fact that rats and mice tend to develop medullary thyroid cancer when they're given medications in this class. A human thyroid is very different than a rat thyroid, and there's no evidence that Bidurion or any other medication in this family cause thyroid cancer in humans. The FDA warning is based totally out of precaution, and if you're one of the very few people with this very rare form of thyroid cancer, okay, then we'll use a different diabetes medication instead, just in case. Okay, now this isn't really a side effect, but while on the topic of downsides, Bidurion uses the largest needle of any other medication in this family. The injections don't really hurt if they're done correctly, but most medications do use a tiny little needle to really minimize the amount of pain there is, if any at all. But Bidurion is a thicker liquid that has a powder mixed into it, so a smaller needle just doesn't work because it, the needle would get blocked and it wouldn't inject properly. So because of that, the needle in the Bidurion pen is a 23 gauge needle. You can compare that to a 29 gauge needle with Trulicity or the 32 gauge that comes with Ozempic and Victoza and it's hard to argue that there's not a difference. So how about my opinion of Bidurion? Now that we've covered the facts, let's move out of the world of facts and into the world of my opinion. I think Bidurion is a good medication that provides a lot of benefit to a lot of people in improving blood glucose control and helping them lose a little bit of weight. I prescribe this medication a lot and I'm perfectly happy to have my patients use it when it's appropriate. I'll admit though that it's not my favorite medication in this class. I don't dislike it by any stretch, but there's things about other members of the family that just make me like them a little bit better. For example, in terms of A1C reduction, Bidurion does a nice job of bringing the A1C down, but there are other medications in this family that bring it down even more. It's not a big difference, but it is more, and sometimes we need all the help we can get. In terms of weight loss, three pounds is nice, but it's not a huge amount, and most of the other medications in this family do a better job of causing weight loss. And while they're not meant to be used as weight loss drugs per se, like we just mentioned with A1C, sometimes we wanna get as much as we can. I kind of wish that Bidurion didn't take quite so long to reach that steady state and hit its maximum effectiveness because even though I know that diabetes is a long game and two and a half months really isn't that big of a deal in the grand scheme of things, when patients start taking a new medication, they usually want to see that it's working. I've had plenty of patients come in and tell me that they felt frustrated after they've taken this medication for like six weeks and they didn't see much improvement. And even though I encourage them to hang in there and I explain how it works the same way that I explained it to you guys, people just naturally want to see some sort of evidence that their medication is helping them. And I get that. I think where Bidurion really shines is in its side effect profile. I mean, seriously, it might struggle to keep up with some of the other GLP-1 medications in terms of A1C reduction and weight loss and cardiovascular benefits, but those other meds really do offer those benefits at the expense of much more frequent side effects. When I have a patient who's had a hard time with side effects from another medication like Ozempic or Trulicity, and I still think that a GLP-1 medication would help that patient, Bidurion is absolutely my go-to. A lot of patients still do get bad nausea and other side effects with Bidurion, but it is indisputable that Bidurion causes these side effects much less frequently than any other medication in its class. So there's your full review on Bidurion. I'm hopeful that this has answered some questions for you. Maybe it's helped prepare you to use Bidurion for the first time. And I hope that you have a good idea about what to expect when getting started. Question of the day, have you tried Bidurion? If you have, how'd it go? 
Tell me about your experiences in the comments or if you have any other questions. If there's something that I didn't cover, let me know and I'll do my best to reply. If you found this video helpful, do me a favor and give it the old thumbs up. It really does help this channel reach as many people as possible. And make sure that you hit the subscribe button and the bell so that you can continue to get new diabetes videos from Sugar High as they become available. I'll plan on seeing you guys in the next video.